understood the big deal with magic and wizards and stuff. I mean, especially as a muggle, I just never really found it interesting. I mean, what's so cool or fascinating about going Alakazam- Whoa! No. Oh. Right. I should probably get started with the review, shouldn't I? Alright, so let me explain a little bit about this book. I have not read this book till, like, a few days ago. Well, a few days from the time I'm recording this. So yeah, I had recently just read this book. I never read it as a kid. I had never seen any of the movies before. The only thing that I've ever seen or read Harry Potter was I saw Fantastic Beasts once. That's it. So that is literally all I know about this entire world, about everything. So obviously I've been spoiled for this book quite a bit because it's so freaking popular, but I hadn't read it up to this point. So I'm going to be reviewing this in a little more interesting way as someone who has just read it as an older person who really has no nostalgic values to it. Anyways, after reading this book and composing down all my thoughts, I realized that this book has a lot of thoughts and things I want to talk about. So I'm actually going to be splitting this into four videos. This first part is going to be about the characters, the second part is going to be about the world building, the third part is going to be about the writing, and the fourth part is going to be about the story slash plot, my overall thoughts of the book as a whole. And so I just wanted to say that, and without further further ado, let's get started. So one of the things that I heard about this book before I even read it was that the characters in this were really good characters, um, and that was one of the highlights of the books and the series overall. And well, after reading the first book and judging solely on the first book, I don't think they're actually amazing characters. Some of them are better than others, so let's start with the main character, Harry Potter. I don't think this character is that good of a character. He's kind of a Mary Sue. There's not a lot really to him. He doesn't really have a lot of depth, and you might argue that maybe he gets has um, more depth as the series continues, and while he should, and I'm not saying this character has to completely grow and be, you know, uh, super well developed in the first book, especially if you are planning to write a series, and it is very clear by this first book that J.K. Rowling was intending to write a series, but your main character has to have flaws, especially in the beginning. And really, Harry Potter's only flaw in the beginning is that he doesn't know anything about the wizarding world. That's it! And that doesn't mean he's bad in the wizarding world. Quite the opposite. He's super popular in the wizard world, he's super rich in the wizarding world, and oh yeah, by the way, he can also master flying on a broomstick for his first time. There's no explanation for why he's just perfect at this and he's just a perfect natural at this. He just is, and that's that's just a fact, and he's just really good at, you know, everything. You know, except for chess. But besides that, you know, at all like the natural talent, he's got all of it, everything, and it's just, it's it's ridiculous, and I don't like it, and I and it sort of takes you out of the story, especially with the whole Quidditch thing. The fact that first year students cannot become Quidditch players, and then they make an exception just for Harry Potter, is crazy. That was one of the things that took me out of the book. I'm like, really, why, why did you do this? I, it just it didn't make any sense to me. As well as his character didn't really grow in it. The only thing that he just learns stuff. That's that's it. That's all his character really changes in the book. And moving on to the other main characters, um, Ron is essentially the best friend. And he is in an interesting way, though I don't think he was his intentional foil, Harry Potter's intentional foil. He almost is sort of a foil in the sense that he knows about the wizarding world, um, he's not really a natural in anything, um, but like he has a lot of brothers and sisters, and he comes from a wizarding family, and he knows his parents, his parents are really loving, and in a weird way he's sort of the opposite 
um, in Harry Potter and that, which I do sort of appreciate, but besides that, we, we don't really, doesn't really grow in this first book. I think that was really my problem with it. He's set up pretty good, um, his actual characterizations are interesting. He actually has a motive um, in the book, as we sort of see, you know, he wants to be just as good as his brothers, and uh, that's, you know, a good motivation, especially for not the main character and stuff. And you, again, Harry Potter doesn't really have a motivation in this story. I don't understand his motivation, um, at least in this book. So, you know, there's that. And I mean, Ron as a character, again, I, he's a good character. The only thing that I really don't like about um, his character is that he never grows. And then there is Hermione, and I have multiple problems with Hermione. Not so much Hermione as a character, but rather how she was treated in the book. I find her a way more interesting character than um, Ron or Harry, mostly because of her background. She has two muggle parents and she's a wizard, and yet she's very smart and she knows a lot about it. And we know why, it's because she got the books early and everything and she studied really, really hard. And that makes her motivation, which essentially she wants to stay in Hogwarts, makes all the more sense because she's the only wizard in our family, at least that we know of. We don't know too much about her background, but that that's what we know. I wish we could have gone more into Hermione in that way. Um, she was very much played off in the book as just this, um, you know, know-it-all smart girl, kind of annoying, mostly because we had, we were taking through Harry Potter's perspective. But I mean, you have a third person, so it is pretty easy, you know, to gather more in Hermione, and I hope as the series continues, again, I don't know, but I hope that we do get to see more about Hermione's home life, because I find her home life way more interesting and the one out of the three main characters we know the least about, because I, I just find it interesting, like, how does her parents, you know, react to her being a wizard and everything, and they seem to be supportive of her, but, like, how does that really go? I mean, like, I, I just find that extremely incredible, and and everything and then at the same time I was like why is she not in Ravenclaw like she's brave but like she's more intelligent than brave and she's a really hard worker and everything and she was put into Gryffindor and I don't understand that we could see at the end that she was brave but like even when the ogre comes and she's in the bathroom and she's like frightened and everything and then Hermione I I don't understand why she wasn't put into Ravenclaw, not so much why she was put into Gryffindor, because she does, she is certainly brave, um, but why she was put into Gryffindor rather than Ravenclaw, because I just think she would fit better in Ravenclaw. The only explanation I could come up with was that um, J.K. Rowling wanted her to be like a main character in this series, and she wanted to keep all the Gryffindors in like one area, I guess, and how she set that up, but that's more of a world building problem. Draco is the only main character in Slytherin um, that we see, well, the only child character in Slytherin that we see, and really from any other house, and he's Harry Potter's foil, but because, as I said, Harry Potter wasn't well-developed character, Draco also is not a very well-developed character. He's just sort of an asshole. You know, he's just like this rich kid who comes from this wizarding family and he's Slytherin and he's annoying and maybe a little racist and to him and I, I really hope we get developed his character more. I really hope his character develops. It didn't develop at all but I'm not surprised because um, of the role he played in this book is really just the asshole to sometimes cause problems. I mean that's literally his only role in the book. And that is to the only other kids we know of in Slytherin are his two, like, goons. And those, those characters are the most useless characters in the entire freaking book. Out of all the characters in the book, whether I liked them or not, they all served their purpose in one sense or another, except for these two kids. I don't even know, remember what they're called. That's how memorable, that's how unmemorable they are, that's how pointless they are, because they're just these two little goons and they're just, you know, around inside at all the time. And there's really nothing to them besides that. I just find them extremely boring. However, on the flip side, when it comes to the adult characters, um, the teachers in the school, 
uh, we have Dumbazor, who's kind of this mysterious character, and I and I find him interesting enough, and he definitely served his point in the story as kind of like this mysterious overseer. So I didn't mind him, and I find him very interesting, and I think there is a lot more depth to him than we know, and I hope that as the series continues, we learn more about him. But I didn't, I wasn't problems by it, and then. Um, the only other two char teacher characters, all the other teacher characters were fine. Um, they all served their purpose and everything. They were all pretty depth, except for Flick, I guess. His only purpose is that he kind of just like gets them in trouble, and he wasn't really well developed, so we don't really know why he's doing any of that. Um, he was the only adult character that was kind of like, eh. Like, you know, he wasn't well developed, and there's a difference between an antagonistic character, and we'll talk about that in a second, but an antagonistic character or an antagonist or a character you don't like and just a flat out bad character. And he wasn't even like so evil he's good. Like he's a good character. He was just kind of like annoying and just and just like a source of conflict. And it just it was it was really bad and I really hated it. Like every single time they snuck out at night and they do this a lot in the book. But every single time they snuck out at night and like he and like you hear him or like his cat, Mrs. something, I forget her name. Um it's just like, ugh, not this again. <laughs> no, no, please, please don't. Ugh. So he was one of the characters, like, every single time he came on, I was, like, disgusted because literally his only purpose was to catch the kids. It, they did anything bad, and I just found that very annoying. So, anyways, um, moving on to the adult characters I do like. There's only really two that I want to talk about. There's one other character that's, a teacher character that's important, but basically she's the head of Gryffindor. She sometimes gets mad at them. She doesn't really serve much. But first I want to talk about Snape, because I love this character so much. He is my second favorite character after Hagrid, who is my favorite, and I will talk about him soon. But um, Snape, I, I loved this character. He is so fascinating and in the beginning of the book and throughout really most of the book I was just kind of like oh my god he's the villain he's so clearly the villain and the only thing that kind of made me stop to think that he could be more than just oh my god the classic villain oh my god it's so obvious it's because I remember because I was sort of spoiled for this point um that he wasn't the villain or like he was like a trick villain or something and I was like okay so he's not the villain but he's so clearly painted as the villain and actually I liked how J.K. Rowling did this. She made him so clearly the villain that, like, when you find out that he isn't the villain at the end, he wasn't the one after the Sorcerer's Stone, it's actually more of a shock that he wasn't the villain than who actually the villain was. But, um, uh, because they, they so clearly painted him, it's like, he's Slytherin, he hates Harry Potter, you know, he's, he, you know, we see him, um, sneaking around, um, he... They think that he's trying to kill Harry Potter at one point, and all this, and you really, really think that he's the villain, and you're just like, oh my god, this dude is the villain, it's so obvious, and you're, you know, you're about to, like, throw him off as, like, a terrible villain, and then you find out he's not the villain, and you're like, what? And then you sort of hear a little bit more about him and his backstory, and rather, he was actually trying to protect Harry Potter, like, the entire time, he was trying to protect him. He hated him because he hated his father because his father saved him, which, interesting, I want to know more about this. But, like, he's just, it's, it's, it's so fascinating. Like, he hates him, but he's trying to save him. And that, and that's fascinating to me, and I, and I, and I love that. And she gives a reason why this is happening, um, because he feels like he owes his father something. Um, he owed Harry's father something, but... I found that I found that incredibly interesting and fascinating, and I loved it. Um, and then the actual villain, though, um, who ended up being the actual villain, Professor Quill. I'm just like, okay, so he's the villain. I'm like, okay, so he's the villain. So, <laughs> funny enough, when he was first introduced um, in chapter like I think three, um, when Harry was going uh, to get his like stuff for school and everything, I when we met him, I'm like. He's the villain. He's the dark arts teacher. He's stuttery. You're not going to expect it. He's the villain. And then, as I said, J.K. Rowling painted Snape the villain so much, I'm like, he's got to be the villain, but I know he couldn't be. So when it was revealed that Professor Quill was the villain, I was like, I'm not 
surprised. I was more surprised that Snape wasn't a part of it, that Snape wasn't the villain and everything. Like, I was, like, kind of thinking for a second when it was revealed that he was the villain, I was kind of like, oh, and so Snape is, like, his accomplice or whatever. No, he wasn't. That that was, as I said, the interesting part. But, like, the fact that, you know, he's just this, this stuttering guy, and then all of a sudden he became so cool and collected and everything, and he became the classic villain, and he was the host body of Voldemort, and all that, and it's just like... <sighs> okay. Alright, yeah, alright, I sort of saw this coming, and then he became super villainous and evil, and apparently he was the one trying to kill Harry Potter the entire time, and blah blah blah, blah. and it's just like, okay, that's not that good. And I think also... Um, that fact and the fact that the whole twist villain thing, I mean, I'm, I'm really sick of seeing it. It's been, and this isn't necessarily J.K. Rowling's fault or the book's fault, really, but I'm personally sick of the whole twist villain thing, um, and everything, especially in this context, you know, it's like, it's actually secretly this one character you threw up the entire time. They did this in Wonder Woman, too, and I just, I hate when this happens. It's like... <sighs> The only thing, again, I totally saw him coming a thousand miles away as the villain, I just, as I said, she sort of backed that up with Snape, which again made Snape better, but him, and him as an actual character, it just, it was such a random flip, and it was, it was dumb, and then, you know, I don't think we're ever going to see him again, that might be wrong, maybe we'll see him again later, but, <sighs> I'm not even going to talk about Voldemort, Hagrid, and he's not exactly a teacher, but, um, I love Hagrid, he's the best, he is an amazing character. Um, I, I think a lot of people like him, um, at least the people I've talked to said they really liked him, so, but, uh, he is just great. I just, I love him, he's the best, he's my favorite character, hands down, he's the best. And my least favorite characters are by far, though, Duelies. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the Duelies, just because they are important and I just have a few things to say. Basically, the kid is just an asshole kid, fat kid, stereotype. I don't like him at all. He barely serves a point. Um, and then the parents, the mother, M Mrs. Dooley or whatever, is actually sort of interesting. The fact that her sister was a wizard, but she hates wizards and she's sort of jealous of her. And we don't really get to see that till basically till her, her character goes away. But um, I found that a little interesting and that intrigues me a little bit. But, like, I don't understand the motivations for Mr. Dooley. Like, why does he hate wizards so much? Like, why is he so much like this? Like, I understand why his wife is like this, because his her sister was one. But, like, this guy, like, why is he so... I just, I don't understand. And it just, it doesn't make any sense to me why he's like this. I don't understand, and they don't explain why. So, there's that. Um, and that's about it for the characters. So... That's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like it and subscribe to my channel for more. I'll be posting the next video to this on Tuesday, so check that out then. Besides that, also, um, my writing partner Grace and I have a website, if you didn't know. Link is down, um, I've linked that down in the description below. And also check us out on Facebook at Carmen.Thompson. And yeah, I'll see ya.